another session welcome to a continuation of the Cauchy Riemann equations um, today we are just gonna continue but uh, before we continue any further um, I would like us to go through this but now with a little bit of a tweak now because you can remember when we were introducing Cauchy Riemann equations we just spoke about um, the existence of the derivative, the existence of the the, um, the uh, first order partial uh, derivatives. Okay, so now we never spoke about uh, where it exists, which means we only spoke about its existence everywhere. So today we'll speak about differentiability or the sufficient conditions for differentiability. So we will have the same definition as we had for Cauchy Riemann. Suppose we have a function, okay? So we have this function, or, okay, let's just say, let the function be that, okay? Okay, and this function is defined by, uh, through some neighborhood, okay? Uh, um, we call it an epsilon neighborhood, okay? So if, uh, 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 that neighborhood exists, that neighborhood will exist around a point, okay? So we're gonna have a neighborhood around a point. If you can check well, uh, videos on real analysis, um, which I have not uploaded as yet, actually speak about the neighborhood and I'll upload the videos for you to understand when I speak about when I say a neighborhood, okay? So if there is, if there exists a neighborhood of this particular point, okay? If there exists a neighborhood of this particular point, then the first order derivatives of u and v will exist everywhere in that neighborhood. Okay. Now, what I mean is, if if it happens that we still have this point z zero and we have a neighborhood of this point z zero, then um, uh, the existence of these derivatives, first order partial derivatives of u and v with respect to x and y, will exist everywhere in that neighborhood. Okay, and another thing that you need to understand is that these partial derivatives will be continuous everywhere in that neighborhood. And with that being said, the Cauchy Riemann equations will also be satisfied everywhere in that neighborhood. Okay, so if that whole thing happens, again we go back that our first derivative uh, of that particular point will be equal to. Uh, the partial of x plus i the partial of uh, vx okay so uh, I don't want to speak too much about these things and <laughs> maybe uh, 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 over indulge or over explain these things but you need to understand that now we are speaking about a specific part uh, where z is included okay now let us have an example okay so now the, the example says this is example two from the previous session okay so they say that show that uh, f prime of z and its derivative exist everywhere and find uh, f uh, uh, um, the second derivative uh, when our function is given by that okay so let us save the solution guys i don't want to waste time uh, with these questions anymore now the solution is that first thing first we need to rewrite our fz as e to the negative x and have what uh, cos of y minus i sine of y i've explained why we do have something like that guys okay in the previous video so if you if you have checked that video then you'll understand uh, why i'm writing it like this so let us identify u x y uh, which is equals to e to the negative x cos of y and let us identify vxy which is negative e to the negative x sine of y okay so we need to check if whether the Cauchy Riemann equations um, uh, are satisfied okay so let us see ux ux is the uh, partial of the function u with respect to x so it's negative e to the negative x cos of y ui is the partial of u with respect to y so it's just gonna be negative e to the negative x sine of y since the derivative of cos is sine okay so vx 
is going to be this multiplied by that so this is just going to be equals to now the derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the negative x sine of y can you see that guys okay and then uh, vy will just be equals to the derivative of this is just negative e to the x cos of y and with this you can see that our ux is equals to vy and our ui is equals to negative vx okay so the coach Raman equations are satisfied now we are going to say so i'm not going to write down the statement due to space so my space which i have is a letter so i won't write uh, too much about that one so i'm just going to tell you uh, the statement that is going to uh, hold this to be true so the first order partial derivatives uh, exist everywhere and are continuous everywhere since this is met okay so we're going to say that the first order partial derivatives they exist everywhere and are continuous everywhere since the Cauchy Riemann is uh, uh, exist or it's uh, 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 um, satisfied then therefore thus our f prime at zero of z zero actually <laughs> of z zero uh, will be equals to now it's going to be ux plus uh, i vx so our ux is e to the negative x cos of y plus i our v is e to the negative x uh, sine of y so this is what we get okay now if you can check well this uh this value that we have here um it is equals to uh, uh, um negative negative f at z because when you take out a common factor here of negative one we're gonna have negative and have e to the negative x multiplied by e to the negative i y which this is just negative f to the oh f at z okay now we are saying that these two are true now without uh, wasting more time we are looking for the second derivative remember that we're looking for the second derivative so uh, using what we found in the first derivative we can identify again that our u1 x i like to write it as u1 x to uh, differentiate it from the oh actually our u1 not u1 x sorry our u1 our u1 of x y is equals to negative e to the x cos of y okay so i hope we clearly understand where where this thing comes from and our v1 of x y is equals to uh, e to the negative x sine of y which is just our vx and our ux okay so let us find the partial the first order partials so we have u1 x is equals to it, uh, it's negative guys here okay it's negative it's negative x so the first derivative is going to be e to the negative x cos of y and then u1 with respect to y is equals to the derivative of course is a negative sign so it's going to be e to the negative x sine of y okay so that's what we have for this one now let us look at v1x v1x is going to be negative e to the negative x sine of y which is a beautiful thing to see and then our v1y is equals to uh, e to the negative x cos of y and as you can see again the Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied or u1x is equals to v1y true and what we can see again is that our ui1 or u1y actually is equals to negative v1x where our coach Raman is satisfied so since they are satisfied then the answer that you are looking for of the second derivative will be equals to will be equals to now it will be equals to u u1x plus uh, v1x so u1x is just e to the negative x cos of y uh, plus uh, where, where is our v1x is plus 
i e to the negative x sine of y okay so oh now if you can check well uh of oh, u1x is actually a negative sorry it's actually a negative so we must check that thing it's actually a negative here yes because this is a negative here so this is basically equals to uh if you can check this is exactly the same as what we identified as our f fz so we are saying that our second derivative is equals to our fz okay why because they have the same uh, expansion can you see that guys this and that they're exactly the same okay so uh oh i've went about 10 minutes already <laughs> i thought i would do another example but i will have another example which um uh, shows the existence or that shows uh the sufficient conditions of the coach Riemann equations or the sufficient conditions of differentiability so guys thank you for the support you are giving us thank you